This rural region, with its lush green rolling hills, is a treasure trove of bamboo. This is De Hong, the western part of Yunnan province in China. This area, bordering with Myanmar, is populated by several different ethnic groups. Bamboo grows profusely in this region. Here, a bamboo forest is flourishing around this village. The local people use bamboo for all sorts of purposes. Even to this day, most of life's essential goods are made of bamboo, and all are handmade. This tremendous basket is woven out of bamboo and is used to store harvested rice. The bridge crossing the waterway is made of bamboo, too. A solitary bridge connects the center of the village with the rice fields. This structure is a staggering 80 meters long. Yunnan province is known to have at least 250 varieties of bamboo growing within its borders. The 30 or so bamboo trees growing in a cluster here are Yunnan Longzhu, which translated into English means Yunnan dragon bamboo. The tallest type of bamboo can reach up to 20 meters in height. This variety of bamboo is referred to as the giant of bamboos, and is often used as building material. Looking graceful with its chestnut-colored bark, the xiang nuo zu, or in English, sweet rice bamboo, is also known as the princely bamboo. Delicately fragrant, glutinous rice can be cooked inside of this bamboo. Here is the variety known as Tzitzu. Its branches are sharp and needle-like. This type of bamboo is quite common and is found around houses and on the roadside. It is versatile and can be used for making furniture or even columns for houses. Its nickname is Utility Man. It is April. The young men of the village head into the forest of the giant bamboo. They begin to harvest the bamboo. The forest is shared communally by the villagers. The bamboo cut from here is always used for the construction of public buildings or for public events. The young men of the village carry the cut bamboo to the village bridge. The rainy season will start soon. They are replacing the damaged parts before the water rises. This is an annual restoration of the bridge. Bamboo is the only material used. With a touch of ingenuity and some strength, even the toughest bamboo may be manipulated into all sorts of shapes. All the strings being used for the restoration are made from bamboo fiber. Mm -hmm. 
Once it has dried, the fiber strengthens and will not come loose. Lightweight, flexible, and durable, bamboo is the perfect material for construction. This bamboo bridge is able to resist the floods of the rainy season. There are people crossing the newly renovated bridge. Mr. Tang Yen Sen and his wife carry a large bamboo basket. They are both from the Dai tribe. Mr. Tan is 63 years old. His wisdom and ability to survive off the land has earned him the nickname Grandpa Fox. Today, he fishes using his trap, which is, of course, made from bamboo. He sets his trap in the water in the path of the river fish. Mr. Tan and his wife, Gaw, have been together for over 40 years. Their trap is made in a way such that smaller fish are not caught and only larger fish get trapped. After three hours of waiting, several catfish have been successfully lured. Never gluttonous, the ponds only capture the fish that they need. This is the Tan family residence on the outskirts of the village. It is, of course, surrounded by a bamboo forest. Mr. Tan starts to cook the day's catch. The firewood used by the household is also bamboo. Homemade fermented bean paste and chilies are used to flavor the fish. A side dish of cooked bamboo shoots. These delicious vegetables can be found in this area throughout the year. Meals are eaten on the veranda. The Tan's extended household includes their son, his wife, and their grandchildren. A bamboo cup is used for drinking wine. Walls are made from woven bamboo.
the terrace is also made from bamboo. People here live a nearly self-sufficient life through cultivation of rice, vegetables, and the ingenious use of bamboo. Mr. Tan owns a total of 6,600 square meters of bamboo forests located in four different locations. Bamboo requires a lot of maintenance. Unless tended to, it may suffer from rot and die. If bamboo shoots grow too close to one another, they compete for nutrients and sunlight. Therefore, Mr. Tan makes his way to his property almost every day to tend to his bamboo trees and thin them out. This forest has been handed down from Mr. Tan's grandfather. With a little bit of human assistance, a healthy bamboo forest can be sustained. Today, Mr. Tan has cut down some bamboo known as Huangzu, or in English, yellow bamboo. It is the best variety for basket weaving. This bamboo has great length between its knots, which makes it good for making baskets. Well, Two and a half hours later, he completes a basket known as a biang. It is a small traditional basket which villagers always carry. Mr. Tan smokes a water pipe made from bamboo. He enjoys smoking after a job is done. There are over 1,000 varieties of bamboo in the world. They grow in mild and humid climates. Yunnan province is home to many varieties of bamboo. With its subtropical climate and high rainfall, it makes for a perfect ecosystem to support profuse bamboo growth. Animal life here is uniquely suited to a bamboo forest's environment. This locust seen here appears fierce with its bright colors and intimidates foes with its release of a strong odor. At about 15 meters above the ground, a ball-like formation is hanging. It measures around 50 centimeters in diameter. This is not a bee's nest or wasp's nest. It is actually an ant colony. This colony was made from bamboo fiber. According to the villagers, this ant colony is about 10 years old. This is very intriguing indeed. 
Why build a colony so high up from the ground? Many ants have gathered at the bamboo's knot. A closer look reveals that they are licking at the bamboo sap. Bamboo in subtropical regions produces sweet sap. The ants survive on this food. Here is a very peculiar insect. Locally, it is referred to as Yuringuan, which translates as emissary of the arcane. It is related to the elephant beetle. About three centimeters in size, the Yuringuan shows itself at the beginning of the rainy season every year. Its long and pointed mouth is used to burrow a hole into the hard bamboo surface to suck the sap. เป็นบุ้งไม่ก็ก็ตุกเข้าดินกลางเก่าตุกเข้าก็เลยก็ตัวอันเจ้าหลังเอ่อเป็นตัวหลังในสองเดือนนะล่ะเป็นตัวหล
The rain turns into squalls, which come and go at relatively quick intervals. In this season, the bamboo forests and groves tended by human hands show off a luminous, rich color. From the soaked ground shoots the vivacious growth of every type of bamboo. One creature has patiently been waiting for this moment. On the tip of a young bamboo, there are two Yuanguan. Having reached sexual maturity, the two insects start mating. The one on top is the male, the other, the female. Finally, the female digs a hole in the bamboo and lays her eggs there. Each egg is about three millimeters in length. One egg is laid per bamboo shoot, and a total of a few dozen will be laid. The egg takes about one week to hatch. The larva survives by eating the soft bamboo. As the bamboo grows, the Yuanguan larvae living inside the shoot move up higher. One day in July, the villagers have appeared in the rice fields, carrying torches. This is a ceremonial fumigation of the rice paddies. The billowing smoke and noise from the torches drive away the insects, and the villagers ask the gods for a plentiful harvest. Bamboo torches make large crackling sounds and burn very well. Yunnan province has been cultivating rice for 4,000 years. This ceremony has been handed down, its origins shrouded in deep history. Nightfall in the bamboo grove. A small animal is stirring in the dark.
looking something akin to a beaver. This is the Chinese bamboo rat. About 30 centimeters in length, the Chinese bamboo rat is a very rare creature who lives in the bamboo groves indigenous to Yunnan province and southwestern China. This creature feeds on the soft flesh of young bamboo shoots. At night, it is busy scurrying around, hoarding its favorite food and carrying it to its nest. This animal plays a pivotal role in the development of bamboo. It gnaws away pieces of the bamboo roots to use as material to build its nest. This stimulates the growth of newer roots. The animal is seen here chewing on a bamboo stem. It must be very full now. It falls to sleep comfortably. It has been approximately 100 days since the rice was planted. In this subtropical climate, rice grows very fast and it is already time for harvest. The Tan family puts a lot of effort into working during this very important time of year. Their daughter, Yungbo, who is married into a neighboring family, brings the Tans some tea. Yungbo is pregnant. Mr. Tan's new grandchild is expected in four months. Taking a break from rice harvesting, Mr. Tom makes his way to the bamboo grove. He is looking for something. is a bamboo borer. This moth larva is known in China as a bamboo insect. Eggs were laid here in the early summer and they have now grown into larva. larva can be found at the nodes of the bamboo. The bamboo borer can only be caught during this season and is considered a bit of a delicacy in this region. It is said to be high in nutrients and especially good for women during pregnancy. larvae are being cooked in oil.
this meal was prepared for his daughter, cooked with a father's love. At the end of the rainy season, the young bamboo shoots have grown to 10 meters in height. Suddenly, the top of a young bamboo shoot comes crashing down. Something is moving inside. It's the Yuenguan again. It has chewed its way through this chute. It has been about two months since it hatched inside of the bamboo. At five centimeters long, it is still in the larva phase of development. The Yuen Guan is cutting an approximately 15 centimeter long piece off of the bamboo shoot that had served as its home. Why does it do this? The Yuen Guan begins to perform some unusual activities at night. starts moving, carrying the bamboo segment, using it as a form of protection. The bamboo piece acts as a buffer from natural predators such as birds, much like how a shell protects a hermit crab. Yuenguan larva has moved a distance of about 50 centimeters in two hours. It stops as soon as it reaches softer ground. The Yuenguan larva digs a hole about 30 centimeters deep into the ground. The larva will wait here as it transforms into a chrysalis. In about a month, it will grow to be an adult insect. However, it will stay in hibernation until the next rainy season. The emissary of the arcane Indeed, the life cycle of the Yuen Guan is full of wonder. October. Tea flower buds are beginning to bloom.
Yunnan province produces a consistently high grade of tea. The tea fields can be found on the mountain slopes surrounded by the bamboo forest. On the edge of the tea field and bamboo forest, there is an owl's nest. This is a barn owl. In the local language, it is referred to as Nogojan, meaning divine bird. Usually dwelling deep within the bamboo forest, this owl moves to slightly more open spaces when the time comes for raising young. It is rare for this naturally reticent creature to choose to live so close to human dwellings. นกเก่านี้มันก็ตัวเฮาก็รีกันมันจังลักมันนู้หล่ะเขาก็มันก็กางเก๋ามาเหมือนเอานู้ก็แอบโฮมันก็แรกๆเกินเด้อเอานู้
time has come for the young owls to leave the nest. There it goes. The young owls fly into the bamboo forest surrounding the tea fields. From now on, their lives will be led deep inside the forest where they must hunt for their own food. March. A new season has arrived again. Back at the Tan family residence, their daughter Yun Bo pays another visit. Ah, their new grandchild has been born healthy and happy. It's a boy. He slumbers peacefully in his bamboo cradle. This cradle was built with loving care by his grandfather. With one more grandchild added to his brood, Mr. Tan heads back to the bamboo grove. This bamboo was planted and raised by his grandfather. He chooses some young bamboo trees and digs their roots out of the ground. Mr. Tan has moved the bamboo to a small hill overlooking the village. This bamboo is going to be the start of a new grove for his grandson. By the time his grandson reaches elementary school, a rich and dense thicket of bamboo will have grown. The rainy season approaches again. Here is an adult Wenguang, which has just burrowed out of the ground after a long hibernation. Its pigmentation is still light. With weak legs, it is desperately trying to climb to safety up a bamboo shoot.
The bamboo groves of Yunnan, China, are cultivated and tended by human hands. These lush forests serve as home and life source for both humans and animals. A new cycle of life begins at the bamboo forests.